let's do something interesting today. Today, I want to talk about phase change energy storage. What the hell is that? Well, phase change is when a solid goes to a liquid or a liquid goes to a gas or the reverse, gas to a liquid and a liquid to a solid. Now, what happens in a phase change is there's an enormous amount of energy required to do this. Now, anytime you put energy into something, you can take it out. So let's think about this long term along the ideas of energy storage. What we've normally done in storing heat energy, now I'm talking about simple energy storage that we can do for our homes, that you can make yourself, not some massive on-grid billion dollar solar collector. I'm talking about something in your backyard where you can store the heat energy, possibly even seasonally or months at a time and use it on demand. Now, those are some of the big keys is long-term storage and using it on demand. The next thing I'm going to talk about is size. When you start talking phase change energy storage, you're not just storing heat in water. If you heat water up to 80, 90 degrees and then take it down to 30 degrees, you've got that range of heat that you can use. But with a phase change, if you have something that boils and melts at different temperatures than water, it's not just raising the material to that temperature, but it's the amount of energy to change phase from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas that you can store the energy in. Simple tech. That's the name of this channel. And we have piles of videos on greenhouse and growing and all kinds of energy storage, which you can use for greenhouses and growing. Now, I want to talk about the like and subscribe button. Everybody begs you to hit like and subscribe, but what it actually does for you is it tells the YouTube algorithm that you like this kind of content and you want to see more content like this. So YouTube doesn't just serve up my content to you, but will serve up all kinds of other creators making similar content so you can research a topic without even realizing you're researching it and find all kinds of information on stuff that you like. So hit the like and subscribe if this is something you enjoy looking at. Now, when I'm talking about phase change, it kind of goes over a lot of people's head of how much energy can there be in this. But before I get into fancy materials or anything like that, why don't we just talk water and let's do a simple experiment, a very simple experiment that most people can understand when they realize what's happening, just how much energy is involved in a phase change. And that experiment is just boiling a pot of water on your stove. When you boil a pot of water, you put the water on cold and it heats up, it goes from 20 degrees to 30 degrees to 40 degrees to 50 degrees. And it takes about the same amount of time for each 10 degree jump until you get to about 98, 99 degrees. And then it stays at that temperature. It doesn't just in the next minute or two jump up to 110, it can't. There's no more water if it does. So the water boils, but it boils slowly. It'll go on for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, bubbling away in that pot until it's all gone. But realize that it stayed the same temperature. It stayed at 99 degrees just before 100, just before it boils that whole time. That's a phase change. That's the amount of energy required in a phase change. And that's a lot of energy. Now, once it hits steam, then the steam can get hotter and like, 110, 120, 150, people get burned with steam at two, three, 400 degrees, etc., And it just keeps going up and up. But it's that jump from liquid to gas that takes so much energy. And guess what? When you cool that steam and it goes below 100 degrees Celsius, it releases that energy. And this is why some geothermal type air geothermal greenhouses can get more energy than they actually put in because they're sending moist air down into the cool ground and it's releasing energy a lot more than they actually thought they had. And that's a beautiful thing. So we understand that water boils at 100 degrees and freezes at zero degrees. And there's actually another little experiment that if you go ice fishing and you stick your hand in the cold water, if it's 20, 30 degrees out, minus 20 to 30 degrees out, your hand will feel warm in the air until all the water freezes. What's happening is the water is freezing and it's releasing energy and you feel that energy on your hands. It's a really cool sensation. But 
water freezes at zero and boils at 100, and they're not the most usable temperatures for someone that wants to heat a house. But there is a substance out there that's fantastic for this, and it's called paraffin wax. Now, there's different types of paraffin wax you can use. You can get specialty waxes that actually has different points at which the phase change happens, and you can have this engineered to do that. Or you can cheap out like me and just buy cheap bulk paraffin wax, and it will do a phase change from a solid to a liquid and a liquid to a solid somewhere around 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. Now that's a beautiful temperature because at that temperature, if that's the temperature where we're releasing energy, it's perfect for house heating. You can run that through lines and heat your house and not really worry about blowing anything up or killing anything. It, it's, it works really well. So we need to look at some things to do with paraffin wax. Now, if you look around on YouTube, there's some creators that have done experiments with paraffin wax. There's one in particular that I like that uses um, a barrel and aluminum cans. Uh, they had these cans specially made uh, to hold the paraffin so that you can put water around the paraffin wax. Now, the reason for that is that you can get a stall if you have too much material, but if you have water running around smaller pieces of material on these aluminum, which allows heat transfer quite easily, cans that hold the paraffin wax, you can get a much better timed energy release. So when I saw this experiment, of course, I saw the cost of what they were doing. They ordered specialty wax, they had these special containers made. And I thought to myself for a second, is there any aluminum container that I could use that's cheap that I can get for free even and make tons of to do an experiment with hmm so in looking at some of these YouTube channels uh, Peter Schwartz for example and there's also the University of uh, Birmingham that has a large-scale wax storage experiment in place um, these are really worth checking out and seeing where it's going. For me, wax, paraffin wax in particular, I don't really need it specially engineered. I just need to buy it in bulk, and it's actually relatively cheap to buy in bulk. I need to have it so that I can run water over it in smaller amounts so that I can stop and start the water and control somewhat the phase change. Because if you can control the phase change, then you've got energy on demand. You've got an energy pack. So I would like your help. What do you guys think about this? Can we actually design a workable medium scale for you know a house seasonal energy storage paraffin wax battery at a reasonable cost? Now, this is the number one thing I look at when designing anything. We can do anything if we have millions of dollars, but if we're gonna do something on a budget, we can use recyclable materials, stuff we can get anywhere and build something functional with it and materials that we can get cheap, we got something. Has anyone out there actually used paraffin wax to store energy? So this is a prequel video. I'm actually going to do an experiment with paraffin wax and aluminum cans in a larger container that I can run water over. And I'm gonna do it a control with another container that's just water and see if I can increase the amount of energy that I can get out of the paraffin wax energy battery versus just a straight water heat battery. I'm excited to see what will happen because if I can double or triple the amount of energy, I don't know if this is gonna work, but looking at the charts of mine, we might actually really have something here. I would love your input. Say something in the comment below if you want to help with this experiment. This will happen in the next couple weeks and we're going to do this.